Okay, in the last video we looked at different types of energy and you might have noticed that some types of energy were about things moving and other types of energy were about energy that's stored in objects. And there's actually two different terms we use for this and they are kinetic energy and potential energy. So what we're going to do is have a look at kinetic energy and compare it to potential energy. So kinetic energy is the energy of things moving. The energy of moving things. And those things can be objects or particles, which are microscopic, things like atoms and molecules, and they can be waves as well. Not the waves on water, but waves like light and heat. So kinetic energy involves movement. And the types of energy that are kinetic we'll go through now. So simple kinetic energy might be something like a tennis ball flying through the air. It has kinetic energy. Or a car driving on the road. A car, a moving car, also has kinetic energy. But on top of that, we also have light energy. So when light energy enters our eye, it moves as a wave. So again, that involves movement. Light energy is kinetic. Sound energy is also kinetic because sound involves vibrations that move through the air. And heat also involves movement because heat moves like waves as well. So if there's an object, a particle or a wave that's moving, we call this kinetic energy. The other type of energy though is called potential energy. And potential energy is stored energy that can be used later. Stored energy and it can be used later on. Some of the types of potential energy that we've seen are electrical energy, because it can be stored in batteries, and then when we connect that battery up to a circuit, then the electricity flows around and energy is used. Another type of potential energy is called gravitational potential energy. And we talked about gravitational energy last time where a person was bungee jumping. So if an object is sitting high up, like if we have a ball here sitting on top of the block, it has gravitational potential energy because if we nudge it a little bit, it has the potential to fall down and use energy as it falls down. So if an object is sitting on top of something else or is high up, it has gravitational potential energy. We also have elastic energy or technically elastic potential energy. And like I explained before, if we have a spring or some other stretchy object 
And if we pull that spring apart and loosen it, then we have to hold it apart, otherwise it wants to pull itself back together. So while we're holding that object apart, it wants to pull back, and it has the potential to pull back. So when we let it go, it coils back together because it had elastic potential energy. So it pulls back and it uses energy. We also have chemical potential energy. Chemical potential energy, which is energy that's stored in foods and fuels. So something like a banana. When we eat a banana, our bodies break down the chemicals and we get energy out of it, and that lets us use our bodies for things like running. Finally, we have nuclear energy, which we mentioned last time as well. And technically, we now want to call all these nuclear potential or chemical potential energy, just to show that they're stored energy. And remember that nuclear potential energy is stored inside atoms. And the way we use it is we get radioactive atoms. And in a nuclear power plant, they convert that into electricity. So there's energy that's stored in the radioactive atoms. And afterwards, we get out energy from the power plant. So whenever we're thinking of types of energy, we can always classify them as kinetic or potential.